Hey, what's up Smoke Nation? Zach here with American Smoke, and today we're gonna to do a six month review of my Pit Boss Pro Series Pellet Smoker. I've been cooking on this thing for uh, you know over six months actually, because I waited two months before I did my initial review, so I've got a lot of experience. I've cooked just about everything you can cook from brisket to beef short ribs to Boston butts to baby backs to spares, everything you can think of I've done. Turkeys, chicken, wings, and today I'm gonna give you a little bit of feedback on this unit based on my experience. So make sure that you stick around, hit that like button for me, and we're gonna to get to all that right now. All right, so one of my favorite things, one of my big pros for this unit is gonna be your ability to control it. And that comes from your control panel. Uh, you have the ability to monitor the temp, to set the temp, it regulates it for you. If the temp in the chamber goes up, it brings it back down. If the temp in the chamber goes down, it brings it back up. You have the ability to set recipes where it handles all of the legwork for you as far as needing to monitor and wondering when it's gonna hit a certain temp and what needs to happen when it does hit a certain temp. When you learn how to use this thing properly, it'll take care of all that for you. I have got a, a video that I've made. If, you, if you're new to this uh, unit or if you've got it, um, thinking about getting it and you're wondering, man, what is the recipes all about? Well, I've made a video for that and I'll leave a link in the description down below. You can check that out. I go step by step how to set up your recipes and how to use your meat thermometer in order to really get the most out of this unit and out of this computer system right here. Another big pro, speaking of the control panel, is gonna be the fact that you do have a meat probe that is wired into the control panel. Pit Boss offers you two. You've got two ports right here. You've got port one and port two. Port one is your programmable one. Port two is just gonna read temp and tell you what the internal temp of your meat is. But probe one is the one you can program it. So I can set it to where if my boss and butt hits 205 to shut the unit down to 180 degrees and then it'll just run at 180 to keep everything nice and warm until I get to it. It eliminates the uh, the risk of me forgetting about it or getting busy in something, it hits 205 and then I don't come and check it until it's at you know 220 and now my balsam butt's overcooked and dry. So that's a great asset to have in a cooker. Another big pro that I really like about this unit and I think really if you've ever cooked on a barrel type, you'll really appreciate it, is the glass. You have this great big viewing area that lets you watch your barbecue cook. As long as you keep it cleaned every two or three cooks, you'll be able to look in there, you'll be able to see your balsam butts and your briskets and your ribs and everything taken on that mahogany color. You can drool over it a little bit like I do. And it's just a huge asset because if you do have a barrel type pit boss or Traeger or whatever you might be used to cooking in, you know if you want to look at that meat, see how it's coming along, you got to open it up. And what happens when you open it up? Let a ton of heat out and that's going to disturb your cook. With this unit, it's great. You don't have to worry about that. Once you get it open, another big pro is all the space that you have. I can cook a full size turkey for Thanksgiving if I want to. And then if I want to do like a smoked dressing to go with my turkey, I've got these racks up here. I've got plenty of options. You can pull all of these out if you want and just leave one and have just a big open chamber or you can have stuff cooking on the top too and have something bigger on the bottom. Or It just gives you a lot of options that way. So that's, that's a big pro for me. And I think that if you go with this unit, it's something you'll learn to appreciate as well. Another pro that I've come to really appreciate with this chamber, I kind of mentioned it when I was talking about the control panel, is its ability to maintain heat. It really does a fine job of maintaining heat. You don't have to worry about it a whole lot. I have had very good success with this thing, just maintaining the heat that I want. And so that's something you can look forward to. All right, so and last but not least, I've done a couple videos on this. And if you've seen them, that's something I like about it. It's easy to clean. It's really not that bad. I've been on pits, you know, that you really just have to just break your back in order to clean. Not with this thing. I'll leave some links below to the videos I've made on how to clean it in case you've got some questions there. But I'll just tell you if you're wondering about this unit and you know, kind of looking into getting one, it is pretty easy to clean. Also, it's pretty easy to clean out this ash pot. I, uh, I think that just judging, from other units that I kind of researched and shot for whenever I was deciding on this one. Uh, this is just makes it really easy. Just pull it out, dump it, you slide it back in and you're good to go. So now let's get into the cons. 
All right, so now we're getting to the downside of this particular unit and some of the cons that have kind of caught my attention over the last six or seven months that if I was in charge, I would probably do something to change it. Maybe Pit Boss is gonna do that on their next version. Maybe they'll watch this video and uh, use these recommendations. First off, let's get into kind of where we finished off with the pros and that's gonna be the cons of the cleaning. I have had issues with this and I have had a lot of people reach out to me about this as well, is, is that issues with this ash pan. So for one, when you first start cooking with this thing, you're gonna notice ash coming right through here. The solution that I found was to just keep cooking and eventually you can see there's ash piled up right there. Eventually the ash from the ash pot filled in this gap enough where ash no longer came into my chamber. But when I first started cooking, a lot of ash came out and actually some floated up into the chamber, got on my food, which I am not particularly worried about, but I have had some viewers comment that are more worried about it. And so that's something to take in consideration. I'm sure there's some sort of high heat caulking or something like that that you could fill this gap with if it really bothered you. But for me, it would just keep cooking and eventually it stopped being a problem. The next issue that I'm gonna say uh, a con about this drip pan is going to be the fact that however they built this thing uh, when you slide it in there there is some real issue getting it to go back in place you have to wiggle it and give it a few pops and what pit boss recommends is there's got a little screw down here and you got to line that up and thread that in now that is just a big issue i i, I get frustrated with trying to get that thing to line up and what i have found is that it does not matter if it is in there or not you just pretty much get it into place it'll do its thing and when you get ready to pull it out you just pull it out you can you can sit there and fiddle with it and get that into place if that's something you're really worried about but for me um, unless I it just catches thread really quickly I just I don't worry about it another con that is almost a plus for some people but sort of a con for me it's kind of unexpected is that the pellet hopper on this thing is it's too big it holds 60 pounds and for perspective the largest bag of pellets that you can buy is a 40 pound bag and so you can put a whole bag in here and still have room for another half bag the problem is is that you know if, if you especially if you have to leave your unit out exposed to the elements you're just putting yourself at a lot of risk of letting your pellets get uh, moisture to them and then they just become useless another thing is that if you're say running some cherry cooking something or running some hickory or whatever you put those pellets in there and you dump the whole bag in there like I would normally do because you've got this huge amount of storage well the problem is is what if all of a sudden I want to cook something with mesquite well now I've got to clean this thing out and what ends up happening with me is I'll burn the I'll burn the pellets and cook and sometimes maybe not get the perfect flavor for the particular type of meat that I'm cooking and so that's just kind of been a con for me uh, it might seem like a really great thing to have this huge amount of pellet storage, but very rarely do I cook enough things in concession that require the same type of wood to get the best flavor. And so I find that um, it's not really needed. And I've just, what I've done is I've just reduced the amount of pellets that I put in and sort of just go from there. If you do want all this storage and you do want to try to take a little extra step to keep moisture out of your pellets, I recommend getting you some blue painter's tape and just closing up these gaps with that blue painter's tape and that'll help to keep moisture out of your pellets while you're cooking. Next, we're gonna talk about the controller. I know that the controller was a pro, but I'm fixing to talk to you about why it's also a con. The negatives about this controller is, is that with this particular unit, you do not get the temperature variations that you would expect from a unit that is called a pro series. You would expect with something being a pro series, you would have very concise, very precise control of your temperatures. Instead, what you get is you get smoke, 150, 175, 2, 225, 250, and then it jumps by 50 degree increments to three, to 350, to four, and to max. So you don't get to cook at 385, you don't get to cook at 325, you don't get to cook at 275. You can set your internal temperature adjustments for your programmable meat probe or for your recipes in five degree increments but they do not allow you to cook in smaller increments if you're looking for a more precise temp uh, it's something you can't really accomplish 
with this particular unit. Other Pro Series smokers, you have the ability to send this back into Pit Boss and they will reprogram it and send it back. But for this particular unit, they do not do that. I have talked with Pit Boss customer service and they say they don't do it yet. So they may have something in the works where they're gonna let people send in this controller and get it reprogrammed. But as of right now, it's a con. And so my last con uh, that I have for this cooker, and this is gonna be something that you have with every cooker. I don't think there is a way to not have this problem. And that is gonna be your heat disbursement. This is just for everyone that's watching this video to be aware of when you get this unit, is that when you're at a barrel type grill, all of your heat is coming from one end. So you sort of know to turn the thicker part of your meat towards that heat or either just to rotate occasionally. With this one, your heat's coming in from all the way down this side, all the way down that side and across the back. So what you end up with is your cool region is in the middle and in the front. Just something to be aware of, like if you're cooking wings, what I've learned the best way to cook wings in this unit is to line them down the sides and across the back. Because the wings that are in this area are just not gonna cook as fast and they're not gonna cook as even and you're not gonna get the same crispiness in the skin as the wings that are around the edges. And so that's pretty much my last con and, and more than anything, more than a con, it's just more of part of a skill of using this particular unit. I just wanted to share that with everybody. So last but not least, I wanna share my last pro. I saved it for last. And that is that I have cooked a ton of good barbecue on this unit. And I have not had uh, really a single operational error to have to deal with too much. It runs smooth, it cooks good barbecue, I get good smoke flavor. And those little cons that I talked about have not really been that big of a problem for me. I, you probably noticed, what is this guy even complaining about? I'm not necessarily complaining, I'm just trying to let anyone who's shopping around for a barbecue unit, shopping around for a pellet smoker to kind of know what they're getting into. And that's what I have realized in my six or seven months of use with this. I hope it helps y'all out. If you enjoyed this video or if you have any questions, let me know. Hit that like button for me and consider becoming a subscriber to my channel. If you do subscribe, make sure to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know next time I put out some content. Thank y'all so much and we'll see y'all in the next video.